Hello, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Only Raphael. Oh, hi, Anna. Can you hear me, Anna? Yeah, I can hear you. Awesome. <clears throat> so how was your weekend? Uh, well, it was, it was great. We had a uh, celebration for my niece's uh, birthday. She was celebrating her 15th party. <laughs> <laughs> so you just can imagine it was move things from here to there and but it was funny it, it, the thing is that it was supposed this celebration it would be on Saturday but there were some inconvenience with uh, the place and they move all things to make the party yesterday Sunday so today we just must get up to go to work and so on, so on. So <laughs> we didn't have the time to rest <laughs> okay. as we expected, but it was funny. It was nice. We've been celebrating with the family. But, but one of... thing, one thing very important. You you can't mm -hmm. say it was funny. You oh, say okay. it, it was fun. Oh, it was fun. Yeah. Do you know the difference between fun and funny? Fun is a verb. Yeah. Fun. fun. Is the adjective? No. Funny is an adjective. Fun is, it's a noun. You see, fun is like when you have a good time. Ah, okay. But okay. funny is like Jim Carrey, a movie, a clown, oh, a funny okay. person. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. So it was fun. Yes. We had, oh, I can say, we had, we had some fun. Yes. Ah, okay. Because wow. like ima imagine and and imagine what a big difference it would say is like, hey, how was your date with with the boy? Imagine you went on a date with, with a gentleman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How was your date? And you say, Oh, it was funny. <laughs> like and what happened, you know? But if you say it was fun, that means you enjoyed. Ah, okay. Got it. Thank you, teacher. Okay. It was, we had a lot of fun. We, I can say that. Okay, cool. What mm -hmm. about you, class? Anyone do anything different? Or just a normal weekend, family time? Well, in my, my case, case, well, good night. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And do in you know why? Case, I'm sorry. Do you know why it's good evening and not good night? The nice, I, I, I think, well, I know that is when you go to bed and sleep. Well, actually, good night is to say goodbye. Oh, okay. Good evening is to say hello. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. All right. In cool. my case, I stay at home. It was a, a very uh, normal weekend, you say. I stay at home. I do... I did some things that I was, um, I well, I had time to do many things. At home. I enjoy, I enjoy, but stay at home and and share some moments with my family, my husband. Me too. But when I, you are when you are at home, always there are many things to do. Exactly. So, I, I prefer to be in my house, really. For example, like, I don't like going, for example, to the beach the, the, on the weekend. I mean, it's nice, but when you get back home, you say like, oh, man, oh, tomorrow I'll work again, you know? <laughs> so I like I like being in my house. I like um, cleaning. I like doing something in my house always and being with my family there. So, 
Mm, that's nice. Cool. Jose Isaias, you were going to say something. Yes. Uh, well, in my case, I uh, just spent time with my family and, and Sunday in the afternoon, I went with my friends to play football and then to pupusas. To pupusas, okay. What about your ex? Are you back with your ex? No, never. <laughs> All right. Okay. So um I see Suma. Hello, Suma, yeah. how are you? I'm I'm good. Very good. Did you have a in my case? Well well my son uh, No no go ahead please. Excuse me. Go ahead please continue. Uh -huh, my son had the flu, I was giving the him. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? My son has the flu yes. and I was taking I was giving. I'm sorry, I was giving Okay, I was giving him. What do you say? Therapia respiratoria? Breathing therapy. Respir therapies. No, breathing. Uh -huh. Breathe. The breathe. Breathe. Uh-huh, but you have to say uh -huh. with ING. Breathing therapy. Breathing therapies. Yes. Okay. I was taking care of, of him. Okay. Okay. Is, is he better now? Yeah, he's better. Oh, okay. Good. I'm glad. Thank you. Sir. All right. So um we're going to continue. And today we have to we finished the um reading comprehension part. What do you think? Which is for you was easier, the listening comprehension or the reading comprehension? I think, uh, well, in my case, uh, listening comprehension. It was easier? Yes, because, well, uh, about the exercise, I think, yes. Mm -hmm. In my case. I consider it was easier, but just a little bit. Yes, both maybe are, just a little both bit. Both are kind of confused. Confusing, yes. I maybe you know what I feel that TOEFL they want to, you know, I think everybody in the listening and the reading, we were reading things and listening to the vocabulary for the first time. Correct? That's correct. We were reading things about prof that only maybe professionals in that area could understand. That's why I hate the person who invented TOEFL. <laughs> or the people, I don't know who invented TOEFL. I don't know why they make it so difficult. Like I would tell them, you know, I would actually tell them, you know, in the real world, Really, really, really in the real world, nobody speaks like that. Only professionals in that area. Like, let me give you an example. My my wife, she's a dentist. And I don't like going out with her and her colleagues. Because when she's with her colleagues, they speak technical. They speak things I don't understand. You know, oh, I had a patient, he had a superior B, no se que, blah, 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 blah. It's very TOEFL in Spanish. <laughs> because I'm thinking, <laughs> what the hell, what tooth, what tooth was that? But that's what I'm saying. It's not an everyday thing. 
it's just that special location things. So once again, if you think it's, it's complicated or you don't understand, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's difficult for everybody. Yes. So let me share the screen. Hold on, let me share the screen. Tell me when you see my screen, please. Hold on. Do you see it now? No, no, no. No, no, teacher. No. No, teacher. Okay, now you should see it. Okay, what about now? Yes. Okay. So I need to know who's in class today. I heard Anna speak. I heard Jose Isaiah speak. Sulma, Adelina speak. Rodrigo Antonio Melendez, I am never going to hear you speak, I think. And Rafael Antonio. Ironically, the only people that speak are the only people that have cameras on, so thank you. Okay, and hey, what's up, David? All right, so we have the midterm review of reading and listening sections. So instructions. This midterm contains information about reading and listening sections. Answer each item according with types of questions, tips, strategies we have mentioned, to you during half of the TOEFL course part one. Once again, you understand tips, right? Tips or strategies is, is the same. So, Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Hi. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, actually in English, you don't say present. You just say here. Here. Uh, okay. Um, You are married, correct? No, oh, no. You're not? Oh, okay. No, I'm not. No, because, you know, because your name is very long too. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. And if you're married. Oh, come on, it's so short. Ana Claudia. It's a one word. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I love your name, Ana Claudia. You know why? Ana is my mother. <laughs> Claudia is my wife. Ah, okay, great. Yeah. But Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez de Benavides. Imagine if you're married. <laughs> remember, remember, I think I told you, I think it was this class that yeah. gringos, gringos, they hate that about Latinos. I know. Yeah, you told us. Yeah, they hate that. It's too long. Yes, they, they only have two names. <laughs> mm -hmm. First name and first, last name. First and last name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, can um, Ana Claudia, can you please mention two types of listening questions we have gone over in this course? Guest and detail. <laughs> and I, my mind is breaking down because I was trying lowercase, uppercase, without end, just comma. Same well, happens with me. I wrote, oh, I wrote it in 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 at the end the grade was like fail. I don't know why. Oh man! You seem furious taking it taking it off. <laughs> you know, you know. I I would actually give you a suggestion. I don't know mm -hmm. if you give feedback at the end of the class, but us as teachers, I have given them a lot of suggestions or like, we need to change the portal the 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 answer structures because 
sometimes there's more than one answer. More than one answer is possible. And, and the portal only wants one specific answer. Mm -hmm. So that needs to change. <laughs> So as far as I remember since the first course I'm studying here. Yes. Not for always being oh, spatial. <laughs> me too. I mean, me too. I, I even had it in, in um years doing this. Mm -hmm. but, but you as a teacher, you have all the, the answers in the platform. I do. Right? I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's why I always tell people, and I know this is not ethical, but don't worry about the portal. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's wrong. We'll do it together. So, yeah, for example, here it can be GIST and detailed questions or purpose questions, but I don't know what what the answer what the answer they want is. So um Adelina. Adelina, what's number two? Type three words which are used in inference questions. Yeah, I wrote imply, infer, and suggest. Wait, you know what? Hold on, just do one thing. In case you have a mistake, right, Adeline? Yes. Mm. Okay, so mention two types of listening questions. We have gone over this course. Here's the answer. Gist and detailed. So answers is gist yeah. and purpose questions. Purpose or questions. purpose and gist questions. My God. But I remember the word purpose. You I can see the, yeah, your purpose screen. was there. Scroll down. Excuse me? Scroll down the, the your your screen because we can can you see? A little more. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, the thing is, I don't want to go too low because I'm going to give you the next answer because right now all the answers are there. Okay. Okay. So that's mean that both of those questions, one, it, we could just write, wrote yeah, one. You could, it's correct now. Uh, okay. Just it could be gist and purpose mm -hmm. question mm -hmm. or purpose and gist. Yeah. Well, I, I remember I wrote. And, and uh, uh, they were incorrect. No, I don't remember to if we viewed the word purpose. It was, no, we did. I guess. We did. Mm. It was a guess. Uh, in fact, even I said it. I, I said mm -hmm. it uh, uh, like five minutes ago. Because mm -hmm. like I said, the, the possible answers can be guessed and detailed questions or guessed and purpose questions. Mm -hmm. I think detailed is for the other one, for the other uh, type of questions. Oh, the way how we wrote it at the beginning was correct. The thing is the order is purpose and guest questions. Mm -hmm. Or guest and purpose questions. Mm -hmm. No, no, but not the word detail. I wrote detail. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, so next we had um, type three words which are used in inference questions. Mm-hmm. And Adelina, what did you say? Imply, infer, and suggest. Let's see. Imply, infer, and suggest. Do you see it? I got it in the same way. I but... wrote it exactly in that way, exactly. and it was incorrect at the end. Imply. Teacher, can you write in the in the chat? Because sometimes uh, there are some characters mm -hmm. that are different. If you write the answer in the chat, then we can copy it for some letter or something. I don't know what is sure. the problem with the platform. Sure. Let me suggest. Maybe because I wrote it and suggest because I wrote imply. Oh, comma, but I'm writing it the same. Comma and suggest. Let me copy from the chat. Maybe you can copy and, and paste in the chat, teacher, because... I did. I did. Just for David, maybe? No, but hold on. I'm sorry. <laughs> hold on to everyone in the meeting. And the first one, teacher, please. Okay, hold on. I will. Hold on. I'm answering a chat right now. 
Jose just wrote to me and I didn't see. Okay, the first one. Here's the first one. And you know what? I'm going to copy them from the answer. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put them here. Let's see if at the end it's going to tell me it's wrong. Because Adelina, uh, Adelina, you said that you put imply, infer, and suggest, and it was wrong. No, I wrote imply, infer, and suggest. It could be the, just for the end. I grew it with the commas and is giving oh, the error. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I copied paste this the first answer. So let's see. Let's see if that's. Let's see what the platform's gonna say. That's gonna be funny if if it says it's not correct and it's their own answers. Okay. So number three, types of questions. Numbers of questions, skimming and scanning are tips which will help you overcome challenges of you what? Copying from your answer is correct now, implying fair is the character letter, as they be said. Mm. And you know what? An imply is not even capital. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> and I got it in the same way. In comma. With a space, not a space, it was incorrect. But I'm copy and paste the one that you sent. Now it's correct. Yeah, oh. I try as many times to. <laughs> yes, copy and paste. You think it's <laughs> strange. <laughs> okay, number three says types of questions, numbers of questions, skimming and scanning are tips which will help you overcome the challenges of reading. Reading, yeah. Yeah. Just by saying scanning. Hmm. Obviously, is reading. What does the reading test measure? It measures your ability to understand academic English. That's right. Facts as major ideas, supporting details, and definitions are from what? Both type of question. Both types of questions. Okay. Major ideas, supporting details, and definitions are from both types of questions. In first questions, Ask you to identify information, identify information. not plainly stated in the reading passage. Okay. Yes, so um, that remember that inference question, I think that is on the exam. Which words are used for negative factual information questions? Not and accept. Not and accept. Mm -hmm. Information stated in a small part of the passage. Detail question. Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I forgot. I haven't put the answers because at the end, I want to see if we got them right. Okay, so information stated in some, in some small part of the passage. It's a detailed question, correct? Mm -hmm. What does listening section of the TOEFL test measure? <laughs> I'm missing your, I just got ability, my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wrote uh, measure the ability to understand spoken English. Okay. Actually, the, the, the answer is correct, but 
Let's put that. It measures your ability to understand spoken English. Or your ability to understand spoken English. I was missing you and for that reason was incorrect. Oh, okay. Mm. But, but you know, I mean, it's understandable the answer because I would have put the ability to understand spoken English. Mm -hmm. Because obviously it's you. Paste it on the chat, please. Sure, I'm sorry. So here's here's one, here's one option. Here's the next one. Mm -hmm. In which type of questions they ask you to identify the main topic or idea? Guest contact questions. So um, I would actually really recommend you to remind, to remember guest and study that. And it's very simple, look. I go to Google, I put guest questions. Guest question, testing or understanding the guest include what is the subject of the conversation? Do you see my page in Google? Yeah. All right. Yes. I love this part. How do you write a guest question? What is an example of guest listening? So um, what is guest in reading? So I would recommend you to, uh, or you can even make it easier. Instead of that, go to videos. Hey, where's video? Look. Look, this one looks good. Guest purpose and guest content inside TOEFL test. Yes. So you just put guest questions and put videos. And you have all that option. So you can watch it in video if you want to study more, or you can have it in reading. Okay. This guy is good. I've seen videos from him. Look, TOEFL lecture, guest content questions. Nice. Okay. So next, to identify what the main purpose of a conversation or lecture is, this belongs to guest purpose questions. You see, Claudia, the purpose. I see it now. <laughs> now let me see if we got them all right. Okay. So what 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 do you need to know from this? We need to understand if you meant if you notice it mentioned a lot of gist. Everything was pretty much about gist. So I would really recommend you to Watch videos, like I told you, about GIST, and we're set. Let's see the next. Now, we've done the reading. We've done the listening. Now we're going to do the speaking part. Hey, she looks decent here, look. The lady. Challenges of speaking, about the speaking section, type of question, speaking practice. So. 
Welcome to our speaking section. In this section, we will go through challenges of speaking, about the speaking section, a type of question, speaking practice. Okay, let's, let's see the first one, the challenges of speaking. What do you think sometimes is the challenges of speaking? You as a ESL student. Do you know that you are an ESL student? Yes, we are. Do you know what ESL is? It's in the chat. I think it's English as a second language. Yes, English as a second language. So as an ESL student, what do you think are the challenges of speaking? To find the correct pronunciation for some words. Okay. That, yeah, of course, that would be number one, the pronunciation. If you're, if you're saying it correctly, grammatically. And I think one of the biggest challenges is that sometimes you feel very comfortable and you know what you want to say in your head, but when it comes out your mouth, it doesn't come out how you had it in your head. It happens mm -hmm. to me a lot. It happens all the time. Hey, it even happens in your native <laughs> language. You know, and then, okay, so this is one of the things. Okay, so let's see this video. One of the biggest challenges about speaking is timing. Becoming fluent will help you deal with it. Fluency refers to speaking with accuracy and natural speed. I didn't hear that last part. Fluency refers to speaking with accuracy and natural speed. Okay, so fluency is your accuracy and the speed, right? But you know what? In my opinion, I think fluency, I think I told you that once, fluency is one of the easiest things to overcome in English. And fluency, the way you do it is when you can't pronounce a word, you say the syllables. For example, pharmaceutical or a pharmacy. Many people say pharmacy or pharmacy. Pharmacy. You know, things like that. But you just, if you want to say, well, you just say far, ma, si. Three syllables. Was that easy? Yes. Far, ma, si. Okay, say it in two. Pharma, si. Pharma, si. Okay, that was easy in two. Now say it in one. Pharmacy. Pharmacy. That's how you practice fluency or pronunciation when you can't pronounce a word. It's what I'm saying. Ask anybody from Europe. Or a gringo say, what is this? Pupusa, what? P -p 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 and then, you know, we say pupusa, and then they say, what? And then you have to say it, you break it in syllables. Pupusa. And they'll start, pupusa. Yes, pupusa, pupusa. And then five times later, they, they know how to say pupusa. So <clears throat> that's one, that's one, um, that's one, I think, like I said, I think that's one of the easiest things in English to overcome because grammar is difficult, reading is difficult, and some people say uh, it's difficult for me to pronounce, but there's a solution. Okay. So let's see the next one. The speaking section of the TOEFL test 
measures your ability to convey ideas. Your response should demonstrate effective use of grammar and vocabulary. It should be well developed and coherent. You see this reading here? Do you see the reading? Yes, teacher. Yes. All right. How would you pronounce this name? It's her name, right? It's her name. And then I heard well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, you know, one thing I also really, 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 really recommend you is to um, try to memorize the alphabet, uh, the military alphabet. Mm. Alphabet. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 your ABCs. Uh -huh. I don't people know. people that work in call centers, I think you, you, you actually have one in your desk. <laughs> yeah, but, but no, I don't recall it. <laughs> No, but you know, after after like A apple, T tango, W whiskey, because imagine you're speaking with someone. Hi, what is your name? Wang Wuhi Huasu was okay. Can you spell that? And then normally they'll start spelling it because they know it's complicated. They'll start spelling it in in um in a phonetical way. Okay, so in this case, it says Anand Agarwal. Welcome to edX. I am Anand Agarwal. I am the president of edX. I am also a professor of electrical engineering and computer science at MIT. David, can you read that same paragraph for me, please? The sentence. Yes, teacher, but I trying to is a too little for me. I okay. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Anna Agarwald. Welcome to edX. I'm Anna Agarwald. I'm the president of edX and also a professor of electrical engineering and computer science and IT. Excellent, very good pronunciation, but let's do one thing, engineering. Engineering. Okay, engine. Engine. E. Uh, engineering. No, okay, repeat after me, engine. Engine. E. E. Ring. Ring. Engi engineering. Uh, engineering. Engineering, engineering. Uh -huh. Say it faster, engineering, engineering, engineering. Very engineering. good. So, mm -hmm. so can you read this last part again? I am also a professor of electrical engineering. And, and also a professor of electrical engineering, mm -hmm. engineering and computer science at MIT. Very good. You see, just by reading it two times, your fluency was much better. Awesome. Okay. Listen to this. Online learning is revolutionizing the world. Oh, that's going to be a difficult word. So listen to how it's pronounced. Revolutionizing. Revolutionizing. Six syllables right there. So let's say the easy ones. Revolutionizing. Revolutionizing. Now say it together. Revolutionizing. So online learning is revolutionizing the world. Education will never be the same. And edX is at the cutting edge of its revolution. Can you read that for me, Jose Sayez? Okay, teacher. Um, online learning is revolutionizing the world. Education will never be the same again. And ADX is a, the cutting edge of this revolution. Awesome. Awesome. 
better than I thought. Thank you. So when you take, hold on. So when you take edX courses online, you are part of this evolution. Online learning is the ultimate democratizer. Wait, wait. Democrat, democratizer. Yes, democratizer. I'm sorry. So if we don't know what democratizer is, let's see it. Oops. It's a person or thing that democrat <laughs> democratizes. What does democratizer mean? To democratize is to make organization more democratic. Simple, right? You know, you know, class, this is another good web page. Look. You see, you see my screen right now, correct? I have this on my favorites, is Google Translate. Do you see this? So you put it in English and you want it in Spanish. Democratizador in English is democratizer. And listen to this. Democratizer. Democratizer. But remember, this is a robot speaking, so it's democratizer. So look, it's cool. It tells you how democratizer. To so is democratizer, 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 democratizer. Can you read that part, Adelina? Oh yeah, sure. So when you take edX courses online, you are part of this evolution. Online learning is the ultimate, ultimate democrat democratizer when you learn on edX you are joining a community okay can you read again this democratizer democratizer democratizer, democratizer. excellent so it says imagine taking a class with 100 000. okay for time i'm going to finish the rest <laughs> imagine taking a class with 100 000 or more students this social this is not a lot of fun. I think you will enjoy the experience. At edX, it's about people. It's not about profit. For you, edX is about the best courses from the best schools and the best professors. Becoming a member of edX is easy. Speaker two, we're really excited to have you here. We're going to get you started quick. Three easy steps. Browse, choose, and have fun. Registration takes seconds. And once you register, just browse the courses. Do you understand what browse is? Everybody in this class does browse. Jose Sayas, do you know what browse is? I think it's something like a do web have, page or do you have something Facebook? like that. Do you have Facebook? Yes. Yes. Do you sometimes are just looking at uh, Facebook with nothing in the specific? You're just you're just moving. <laughs> you're just next. Yes. next. That's browsing. Uh, like scrolling. For example. Yeah, mm -hmm. Yes, you're you're actually like you're looking, you know, you're you're like a book. When you see a book, you just start, you know, reading a few parts here, there, there, there. You're browsing to see if you like it or not. Ah, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I I'm sorry. Um Choose and have some fun. Registration takes seconds. And once you register, just browse the courses. When you find something that you like, click it. You see, this is browsing. 
like I'm saying, like the example I used in Facebook, sometimes you're just looking, looking, but when you like something, you click there, right? It's that easy. Choose wisely. You're selecting courses from the best schools all around the world. Make sure to check the prerequisites. Now you can choose your course and you're on your way. Welcome to the club. Okay, speaker three, now that you've signed up for a course, you can view the courseware. The courseware is made up of great videos, automated feedback, and cool interactive features, all for self-paced learning. Self-paced learning, I'm sorry. The interactives are designed to help you explore your understanding of key concepts a big a big part of edX is getting instant feedback on your answers do you understand what feedback is retroalimentación en español yeah it's like a review no it's what uh, rodrigo daniel said is retroalimentación oh, okay that's why there's a lot of, um, there's a, you know, it's very common to say in English, I am open to feedback. When you give a presentation or, you know, you tell people, go ahead, tell me what, what you think. I am open to feedback because feedback is, there's constructive feedback too, you know. Okay, as you need to get the right answer, courses uh, courses can be tough. We make sure that they're rigorous, rigorous, I'm sorry, but they also can be a lot of fun. A big part of edX is the social aspect. You can be social as you want on the discussion boards. In our forums, there's an active community. It's not just a professor, student help each other out. A typical course can run a semester length or about 12 weeks. At the end of that course, if, you, if you've met the course requirement, you can get a certificate or mastery. Once you completed the course, you're part of our group of lifelong learners. Anand Agarwal, again, <laughs> edX mission to help you get a quality education. edX will increase access to learning for students such as yourself worldwide. This is fun, this is exciting, and this is revolutionary. Welcome to edX, come and join us. I wonder if this is true. Mm -hmm. Okay, speak about a person, place, object, or event that is familiar to you. Here's an example. Talk about a pleasant and memorable memorable event that happened while you were in school. Explain why this event brings back found memories. Found memories is nice memories. Okay, so let's hear. We're now going over the speaking section. We'll go over independent questions one and two. So in the next few minutes, we're going to look at how the questions are structured, what they ask, some tips you may take into account, response features, as well as what you will be evaluated on. Finally, we'll also look at a sample question. So here is generally what the questions will look like and how they are structured. For both questions one and two, Sometimes you will be given a topic to speak about with additional reading or listening passages. You will have 15 seconds to prepare your response and 45 seconds to speak your answer. Now let's look more closely at what the independent speaking questions will be asking you to do. Question 1. Question 1 will ask you to speak about a person, place, object or event that is familiar to you. Here is an example. Talk about a pleasant and memorable event that happened while you were in school. Explain why this event brings back fond memories. 
In question two, you will be presented with two situations or opinions. You will be asked which you prefer and you need to explain your choice. Here's an example. Some people think it is more fun to spend time with friends in restaurants or cafes. Others think it is more fun to spend time with friends at home. Which do you think is better? Explain why. Now here are some tips for how to approach these kinds of speaking questions. Number one, use the preparation time to organize your thoughts and maybe write down some notes. Don't try to write a full response because you won't have time. Don't memorize responses. Memorized responses will lower your score. They sound different and the content is different. Also take into account that you need to speak naturally and use common connection words and phrases, such as because, so, after that, on the other hand, I want to mention what this means is, these features in your response will help you get a better score. Have a means is, Hi, I'm sorry. Um, always try to use these words when you speak. Yes, they're very um, they're very helpful and they, they help you think a little bit more. For example, I remember one of the uh, found memory I had when I was a little kid. It was my first kiss because it was very special <laughs> because it was very funny. Yes. Um, yeah, I remember my first kiss. It was very, it was, very, I think I was 11. And I think it was very special because I it took a lot of courage for me to do it. You see, so when you use because, they're unifiers. So this is a good tip. Use because, so after that, on the other hand, I want to mention... These features in your response will help you get a better score. Have a clear and fluent speech. Have good pronunciation. Natural pace. You will also be evaluated on delivery. Your speech needs to be clear and fluid with good pronunciation. The pace or speed of your speech should be natural and you should have good sounding intonation patterns. Language use. This is mainly how you use grammar and vocabulary to express your ideas. And third, topic development. This is mainly how fully you answer the question, how clearly you express your ideas, and how you can connect one idea to the next in a way that is easy to follow. Okay, so um, tomorrow, tomorrow, Let's do one thing. What is a, a simple topic you can talk to me about? Tell me about your favorite song. Okay, just your favorite song, your favorite movie, or um, in fact, your favorite food, but make it interesting. For example, imagine you say my favorite food is Chinese food because I like it. That's not interesting. Make it interesting. Why is Chinese food your favorite food? You can say uh, my favorite food is Chinese food because I um, I like vegetables. I like the combination of many foods together. I like the flavor of bitter, sweet, salty, all, all that combined. Um, so you're making your answer a little bit more interested. Interesting, I'm sorry. Okay. Tell me which is your favorite song or your favorite music, your favorite band. Yes. My favorite um, movie is so-and-so. I don't know. You can say Fast and the Furious because I like cars. Okay, do you understand? Okay. Okay. Okay, class. So I will see you tomorrow. Okay, so we'll finish here because we only have two minutes left. And to continue the next step, the next video, we'll start it tomorrow. Okay.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Have a wonderful bye -bye. night. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.